Hi everyone, welcome back to our lunchtime chat show at the Voice of Courage Asia. And we're so happy that we're going to be doing the parenting with Enneagram, uh, the Enneagram. My co-host Lilin and I are very pleased to welcome our guest for today, uh, Anita Kaur. She will be coming on to join uh, to share with us her experience on parenting and also what are the personality traits of a type 2 parent, right? Yes, uh, today we're going to learn from the type 2 parent. <laughs> yeah. So for those of you who out there are listening in for the very first time, um, you'll be wondering what's Enneagram. Enneagram is basically a personality profiling uh, system that um, we use it a lot in our community because uh, compared to other profiling system out there, we find that it goes much deeper. It goes all the way down to, you know, why you think, behave and feel the way you do in a very particular way. So it goes into your core, um, your core motivations, like your fears, your needs, your longing, yeah, your desires. So really get, you know, um, into the inner world of how you navigate and your automatic coping strategies. So, which is why, you know, we find it so powerful and so true, right? When we discover, you know, um, not just the traits, but also, you know, the why, why we do think and behave in certain ways. Lisa, you know, I think for the past few ep episodes, we forgot to, you know, mention, uh, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what do I do? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, myself and Lillian, uh, for me, I am a full-time uh, finance executive, but also the founder of Stellar Maternity. Um, I have a passion to help moms, especially new moms that are pregnant or first-time moms that are learning how to juggle motherhood and work life. Yeah, so my passion is uh, helping them to find that balance uh, for for so many of us that we really, really desire in our lives. I think Singapore is too hectic. So learning how to parent with the Enneagram was quite a good thing for me as well. I think it helped me understand why I did certain things the way I did, uh, learn to love myself a bit more. So with Lillian, I hope with this series, uh, more parents out there can learn and use mm. it in their parenting uh, journey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's really a very useful tool to, um, in building relationships and, of course, you know, in this case, um, parenting. So, without further ado, let's bring our guest today up into the screen. Here she comes. Hello. Hi, hi, everybody. Hi, Anita. Hi. Let's bring the screen. Ah, there I am. Yes. Okay, hi. My name is Anita. Oh, are you going to introduce me? No, I'll introduce myself. Uh -huh. I got a lot of confidence. Okay. So, <laughs> Here we go. The type two. Type, four, type two. Okay. My name is Anita Kaur. I am a partner with Class Living together with Lillian. I'm also a community leader with Women of Courage Asia and also a co-founding member of Her Courage Business Network, a mother of three uh, elders, all three girls, elders being 21 and a pair of twin girls who are 19 now. So wow. that's the long and short of it. Uh, Lisa, you have uh, quite a number of questions for Anita, right? Uh, yep. So like first up, uh, Anita, you know, uh, we, we know you for your vivacious personality. And we know you have a lot of experience, uh, you know, you know, bringing out the, the three beautiful girls. We've seen how well behaved they are, how lovely they've been. But we want to know that, you know, when you've learned the anagram, Looking back at your parenting styles when they were young, you know, what were the things that stand out for you that was so typically a type 2 parent? Okay, I, I wish I knew the Enneagram when I was a young mom, to be very, very frank. I wouldn't have, um, I would have been, a, a, how do you say, you know, in the Enneagram, I'm a type 2 uh, to those who are not familiar. Basically, of all the whole nine Enneagram, I'm the nicest one. Okay, outside corrected to both Lisa and and Lily. Okay, they're like we roll eyes. We also very nice, but okay. But I I I, I am the natural helper. So uh so um asking, I mean me offering help, it's like blood running through your veins. It doesn't tire me. It gives me energy. Uh, doing going the extra. I have driven. Okay, to be very frank, huh? my place northeast all the way to Jurong West. Okay, because somebody needed something. 
And it's not because, you know, someone wants to make use of me. No, it's just me so naturally. And I will purposely inconvenient myself um, so that I can help others. So that, that's a bit of a background of what a type 2 is. And again, Lisa, uh, to your question is, again, I wish I knew the anagram better. Uh, and then I think I would have been a, I would have been okay to continuing uh, to, to explain to my girls when they were very young why I need to uh, help them all the time. You know, I'm the kind of mother, okay, I, I'm an early childhood educator before this, right? Um, uh, let me give you a scenario. I am the typical mother, right, that uh, I saw once uh, one of my students, I think a three-year-old, was walking and the helper was behind, you know, behind like that. You know, let the th so I asked the helper, I said, why are you, you know, doing this? Oh, so that the boy, boy don't drop, don't fall down. So imagine me, a type two mother, parenting my kid, I am that mother. Oh, don't drop, don't drop, don't drop, cannot fall down, cannot fall down, cannot fall down. Not being protective, but just wanting to be helpful so that they don't get hurt and injured. So that's the parenting style. Just visualize that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think it's very true. I mean, even as a friend, um, you know, we know that Anita is always offering her help. Uh, her antenna is like her sensor. It's very sharp in spotting, you know, when she walks into a room and any space, she is as if like instantly she can detect who needs help. <laughs> we may not really yeah. need help, actually. I just want to offer help <laughs> because I feel so good about myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, right, so so there's, there's uh, something very interesting and very evident, right, that we can see from uh, Anita. And uh, of course, you know, every individual is different, not no one type two is the same, yeah. But uh, this um, uh, natural uh, being gi a giver, being helping um, characteristics is very, very evident in the for a type two personality. That's why they're called the helper, right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so Anita, I mean, I I I heard you share about you know you saying that you always want to help your children. You bend over backward, drive from one across the island just to get something done for them. For, for, for possibly, um, I know you have a very close relationship with your girls. Have you ever asked them how did they feel about that back then? Did they? Did they like it? That they, you know that my mm, mom is the best yeah. mom ever. You know, she helps me everything, my projects, everything. I want it, she gets it done 110%. Or did they feel differently? Okay, at that time when they were young, they love it. Because uh, especially kindergarten, primary school, we have a lot of school projects and all that, right? You can 100% tell it is not child made. Okay, it is not child made. And I'm an early childhood educator, right? And when I see children's work from home come, I went, oh yeah, your daddy did it for you. Ah. Your mommy did it for you. Or your auntie helped you, right? Your mate helped you. So, um, okay, did that hamper? Yeah, but now they're older and we do reflect. And they said, honestly, it didn't help their growth. Because um, I think just like as I told you, I was behind, you know, I need to let them fall on their backside or fall and break their face if there is such a thing, okay? Uh, but now coming, you know, learning back, uh, reflecting back and, you know, now I realise that the girls now, um, I wouldn't, okay, I will use strong words, okay, I, I, I mean, but it's not that bad, but they kind of reject now uh, me wanting to help them. Like example, right? I knew that today, you know, we're going to talk you know, we're going to meet, right? So before that, they were saying, oh, uh, you know, we, we are going to, they needed to go, they want to go to Slater and just have a walk around. And you may have go, ah, I drove you there, see, so hot, the weather, la, 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 la. And they went, actually, we actually tried to take the bus. I said, no, 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 the aircon, got, car got aircon. And then they're like, okay, la, this one cannot say no to her, right? So they all like sat in the car and grudgingly, <laughs> you know, let me drive there. Then I said, okay, after this, right, when I finish, I pick you up, I pick you up. And they're like, no. Bus number 85 will take us straight home. Okay, we just want to be alone. You get me? So it is, how you say, I mean, I have a wonderful relationship and they're honest with me, but looking back, actually, it did, they didn't quite appreciate it because it didn't, um, because I was too hovering, too over helping, it did, it did, they didn't get a chance to make mistakes. So one of my twin actually told me that you, you, you were very strategic in making sure that there was no harm comes to us. 
you know, an example is like, you know, um, when we first moved, when we were in Singapore, our first HDB was in an environment that was so conducive and safe that it was fairly impossible to mix with bad crowds. You get what I mean? Because I helped my husband to find the right place. And then even after selling our HDB and the girls were still <laughs> in late primary school, I helped him again to find a property here where it is so secluded and super safe. So in fact, they went, you sheltered our lives so much by helping us not to go in harm's way. So now, uh, to be very frank, uh, they are kind of rebelling and trying things. Now they're 19, but they always get caught lah, because they're not very smart. So, <laughs> so it's okay. But yeah, uh, it doesn't help. Uh, being a, a unhealthy tool doesn't help. So as, a, as I'm listening to you, you know, and imagining myself as your girls, um, it feels like you know, uh, there's a lot of invading of the space and, and, and you know. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> right. Uh -huh. Actually, Actually, Anita, I think you're born, you're born in the wrong era. You're born to the kids now. I think they all love you like nobody's business, I tell you. They all want to be spoon-fed. <laughs> uh, uh, the strawberry bubble, generation, you know? right? You will <laughs> oh, love no. me, right? Yeah. The Tao Fu's, right? My oh. son forever said, Mommy, Giving help up me, my girls help me. I said, sorry, you can sort it out yourself. <laughs> <laughs> like I mean, you know, like you never know yes. what you never experience, right? So uh, green is always the grass is always green on the other side. So yeah. tell them they had it easy. Now you gotta gotta learn to fend for themselves already. <laughs> yeah, now now the girls are older, reflecting back. Um they're very quick to reject any help from me. I, I don't have to open my mouth and say, Stop, we don't need help. Stop, we will take the bus. But I say, Yo, your skin's so nice, you know. Baby milk skin, you know, preteen skin. Why go hot sun? <laughs> anyway. Yes. So um so so what is the uh impact or the the impact that came out from this? Um I mean because you, yeah. they were older before you um get to know the anagram, right? Yeah. So you know they went through uh, under the parenting of your um parenting style. Right back then, uh, until um, recent years, yeah. So, so what do you observe um, because of your parenting style back then? Okay, and the outcome and impact now. Uh, parenting back then, you know, um, and I think the outcome now is that uh, two things. One is for themselves, as I told you, they learn to say, "I really need us. We really need our space. Uh, we are not being rude, but we are not incapable of helping ourselves." So that mm. there is this inner voice in them screaming for freedom. Uh, not bad mm. freedom, but good freedom. Like, let us do things ourselves. You know, let, let us take mm. the bus. You know, we know. I mean, do you know I live in North Independence. Yeah. Right, right. I live in North East. And one of my girls mm. is in Singapore Poly, which is in Dover, Clementi side. I drive in the peak hour traffic. Mm. You know, but now I've learned to like, okay, because your teenagers, I don't know about your children, but Lisa, your kids are still young. Teenagers cannot wake up on because they sleep at 4 o'clock in the morning, okay? Class starts at 8, okay? But because, so I say, okay, what I've learned is, second thing I've learned is, I learned to say, okay, I learned to draw boundaries also for myself. So I don't get my heart broken. Mm. So every time when I help you, right? And then you're like, oh, you know, don't want my help. Then I pick up my heart, right? I'm all heartbroken all. So what I do is that I provide one-way transport. The morning, you cannot make it in time, right? Because peak hours. But coming back, you take like, the one hour train, you know, and I, but mm. again, because I'm nice, right? I pick you from the MRT station. <laughs> <laughs> so can't help. One yeah, thing to help. <laughs> the MRT station is only a seven minute drive. So it's not so bad. Not the peak hour, peak hour can go up to an hour because the CTE is a moving car park, right? Mm. So yeah, but I still help. <laughs> Yeah. But drawing boundaries now. Now that I've learned is to draw boundaries. And I learned to accept when they say no to me, they reject me. It's not a rejection. It is just saying, yeah. you know, please, you know, we need our space. So so Lisa, uh, do you do you, I mean I don't know about you, but uh, whether you're hearing the receiving the same as I do, is that um if I were your girls, I feel that you know I 
I need more in give me mom mom give me more space and opportunity to be independent trust to me. do things I uh, try and trust me that trust I can help me. myself. Yeah, trust yeah. me that I will. Make I think that that's that probably the the, so the growing up thing that the children needs to have. Yeah. Mm. Wow, that's very very interesting. Yeah, and um, the other session you know we had uh, was with the uh, type three, right? Yeah. So we heard from Christine that is like um. Yeah, and and Lisa, that you let the kids do, you know, just get it done yourself, <laughs> and um, they they are given more opportunity to being independent. Yeah, uh, because the parents are already running a low bandwidth, already. No, no, no more extra space <laughs> to be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> So here we see like a very contrasting, um, a contrast in the the parenting. Yeah, very, uh, very interesting. Actually, no, the Chinese have a but saying. I, I, we say, uh, "Sin you yu early We want, we have the intention to help, but actually, uh, you know, our time and capability limits us. We just simply cannot, lah. <laughs> you know, we want to do, but or yeah, or you 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 probably you set a goal for them, and you know, like this is what you need to do. <laughs> Yeah, something like that. Right, <laughs> I don't right. know. <laughs> no, actually, what I want to ask Anita was really, I mean, I, I hear a lot that, you know, there's a need to help, there's a need to help, which is the, the characteristic of the helper. But mm. what's the what's the underlying, what, what I say, motivation to, to want to help? Why is that that mm. need to help? Because you think they can't do it themselves? Or I think the underlying... Is there a need to, oh, I don't no. know... I think there's a need to be needed. Mm. If there is such a thing, I'm helping with the intention that um, it's not because I know you can't do it. I mean, come on, you know. Or the last I checked, all their limbs and vital organs were working perfectly, normal functioning. Okay, <laughs> but I think there's a need to be needed because you know, as as children grow up, they need you less, and then as a time mm -hmm. too, I need to be needed. I need to know that I, they still need me. They still, uh, mm. you know, um, they, they still find me useful and, and needed because I have this, maybe, I don't know, maybe the type two, my, my inner voice is telling me, hey, you know, if they don't need you, it's like you're just as good as, 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 as you know, being put in an old folks home and we'll visit you three times a year during Easter, Christmas and Chinese New Year, you know. Oh. It's going be such a thing. Oh, maybe your birthday or something no like that. You know, so, so that there is a need to be needed so yeah mm. so there is a so again it is i want to say it's manipulative but one of the uh thing I, now that i'm aware of the anagram one of the thing I'm, I'm 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 very much aware of is the power of manipulation which is very um second nature or or a blind spot for type two that that they don't realize that whenever they do something uh, I have to check myself. Am I doing it with the right intention, or am I actually doing it for manipulation purposes? So, uh, mm. so uh, now that I'm aware of the anagram, that if I choose to do something, I do it solely because I just want to get it done. I don't care if you put me in Wisma when I turn old. You know, the old folks can call Wisma in Tanamira. <laughs> My daughter always chats to me. You, don't, you, you hey, you better behave. You don't behave. I put you in Wisma. I'm like, no, don't put me in Wisma. They come visit me four times a year. So what I'm trying to say is that um, I'm very much aware now that uh, if I choose to help, it is not for manipulation or because there's a need to be needed. Hmm. You don't require any validation yeah. or, you know, it, or it's just help, period. Yeah. 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 Um, so purpose is to help. Yeah. Right. And uh, do you recall any incident, you know, of how this parenting style um uh, play out in other, um, you know, other characteristics of your personality that uh, are being played out in and impact your children. Besides, just now the example that you gave, yeah, were there any other traits yeah. that were very evident as well? Um, okay, I remember, um, especially when, um, you know, for me when I help, there is a need to, wow, thank the level of help. Your level of praise you must match. If I <laughs> if I help you, you please like whoa, you know. If I help you a little bit, mm -hmm. then it's, thank you is okay. But because my help and I'm such an extrovert, 
So you better shout it from the top of the mountain, you know, like, thank you, mommy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but what happens, and I don't have uh, the kind of anagram type children. I probably have an eight mm. at home. It's like, huh, you help, huh? Go, huh? So, <laughs> I, got, I got a nine, like, huh? The antenna not up yet. Huh, you help me, huh? The sotong, you know, like, uh, you know. So what happens then? I remember, uh, you know, recalling back when they were much younger. Sorry, I don't know. They were much younger. I swing to the unhealthy eight, okay? Mm. So I become very passive aggressive. So I'm like, that's it lah, you know? Help you for what? No use, right? Huh? Don't want to help you lah. Don't send you to school tomorrow. Huh? See how you come home. I go there. <laughs> and I've said it before. And my girls will cry, no, mommy, pick us up from school. Okay, you can do that. Okay, <laughs> am I going to get arrested for saying all this? My child services later. <laughs> But I have done that because, and it's not because the girls were not appreciative. They're just like, oh, thank you. Or because they're so used of me helping. And then suddenly I need that validation. I need that, hallelujah, thank you, mommy, right? And I don't get that. I swing to the aid and I become very passive, aggressive. I become, not passive, aggressive, but I become very hostile and I become very angry. Like, oh, yeah, you don't appreciate me. Lah. Just like, I don't cook for you. Lah. Oh, see how you all live. Lah. But now you cannot threaten that because they have phones and call grab food, right? <laughs> One thing you had highlighted is because the, the kids, they, they, the girls, they do not know. And, and you personally, as a parent, you do not know their personality traits. You, 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 do, you don't know Enneagram back then, right? You don't, uh, we don't know what we don't know. So therefore, their response um, in terms of their appreciation level, is not, it doesn't match. You know, I know. Anita, go and adopt. Uh, go and adopt a type four lah. <laughs> <laughs> he will go above and beyond with her praise for you. No lah, too moody. Cannot. Too moody. Cannot hold it. I'll be like, yeah, I need to help you come out from that hole. Hey, come on, come on. Seven, seven. Maybe, maybe a seven. <laughs> no lah, seven will forget about me. I'm having too much fun. Fruit out. No, That's super fun already. Fun already. <laughs> I don't know, but I think it's yeah. the awareness now. Uh, I think the enneagram is a very powerful tool that you are aware and I also I really encourage you know young people you know to really take up the anagram or to learn to study the anagram you know or to get or to seek billion or both visas both of you are anagram coach to really understand it, it helps in you know not only parenting but also relationships you know yeah hmm. Lisa, I think you have um, a lot more questions, right? Yeah, yeah actually, yeah, I do. So, so the thing is, Anita, you shared with us so much uh, fun anecdotes of them while they're growing up. But I'm just curious, right? What would have been the stress trigger for you back then? You know, or, at, or rather, even now, maybe as a type 2 parent, what is a stress trigger for you? Stress trigger? Um, I think it's validation. It's yeah, validation. like... Mm. Oh, validation. So it is still very consistent, still very consistently, mm. the, it's, the, it's, the, the, the need for validation. The need for validation is still very important because for me to help, it is intentional. I mean, in this season of my life, more so, right? Um, the yeah. validation is very important. Yeah. Like, for example, this time I just sent my kids to Seleta, right? None say thank you. They just got out of the car, Oops. put it on their head, repent, children, and repent. Walk. Oh. <laughs> send this link to yeah. your children. They are so <laughs> like, we'll send welcome. you the clip later. You click again. To them. I mean, I, I, again, I mean, yeah. So what right. I mean, again for them was they gave you a solution, right? They said they don't want your need. They, they said there is a direct pass, mommy, and we want it. But I was so persistent to help them because it's super hot outside. I think it's like 55 degrees, right? And then I say like, hey, you know, let me help you. None said thank you. And then after that, I, I again, I said, you know, when you are done, you know, I'll pick you up. And they went, of course, they said, they rejected me. They said no. So again, um, <clears throat> again, the need for um, validation is very important. It's still consistent. The, the, the thank you, mm. the I notice you help me, thank you. Mm. You know, so that is still um, very, very evident. And, and, and a simple acknowledgement that, hey, hi, Anita, I see you helping me. Oh, that, that, mm. that, that, that gives me a good night's sleep. 
and and oh, I'm happy the whole day. Right. So okay. So based on this point, right? Something. Um, I'm just it's very curious. Uh. So does that because of the your your need um and um how you're being wired your personality, right? Do you actually um advocate or or like uh, intentionally or even unintentionally, you know, um teach your children in you know to be grateful. You know, must every time I say thank you, like like this is like a, a lesson, like something that is very important mm. to be taught to them. Yes, um, ah. it it is very evident in my girls wherever they go, uh, they are help. They are very helpful. Uh, if I ask for help, I think you know, woman of courage, Asia, right? Anita calls children, mm. and Helen's business. You know, Anita calls children is like the 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 number one, the first number, right? On <laughs> auto dial. Activate, 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 help, help, so, activate. Um, unconsciously, being a pure tool, uh, the need to help others is very, very high. Uh, it's now very evident. In my twenty-one year old, uh, you can see a lot of things she do is for others. I, I even mm. though she's a type nine, she's done the undergrad. She's a type nine, but I think she's uh, how do you say taking on the tool very strongly in her. Uh, mm. And then you know an, another twin who is I think she's a two, but again I'm not an Enneagram coach. I can't say. Um, like yesterday, she, it was not her job. She stayed back to clean up the CCA room, and then she's a senior, right? Well, why can't she get the, the the junior do it? So and then the constant need to always put others before self is very evident in all mm. my three girls. Now they are older. Mm. Uh, the need to be grateful. Uh, Despite, let's say, for example, they, they, they help out in Helen's business, example, right? As a, as a part time staff, uh, doesn't matter how much they get paid, it doesn't, it's not the amount, it is the fact that they helped Helen because Helen asked for extra mm. pair of hands and they put up their hand and say thank you and they, and they help Helen. And that should be the validation. Mm. So it's it, now talking mm. about it, it's very evident in our home. So how parents, how we behave and we may unconsciously be passing on that trait and you know conditioning yeah, our children to behave in this. Mm, yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So we mentioned as well uh, in a, a other episode as well, right? We see a lot of the the parents are uh, type being passed on to the children them having grown up in that kind of family uh, background uh, naturally these kind of traits is being picked up by the children yeah being picked mm. by the children <laughs> mm. but having said that uh, you know for, for some personality type that trait may they may feel um, stifled or you know because it's not being their themselves their true self because they are just mimicking modeling after the parent style yeah so and once they have that opportunity and or an outlet you know that that because they they do have certain um level of uh, uh fears and desire and longing and need as well and when there's an opportunity for that outlet yeah then that's where it will be displayed and demonstrated and play out in their life later on yeah because unless some suddenly you know because sometimes we do hear like my kids is not like that, you know. Well, it says from young, you know, they're always behaving this, this, but don't know since when it's suddenly there's a big change. <laughs> and and to the kid, it was like, oh, freedom. <laughs> they finally <laughs> had room to grow and spread their wings, right? <laughs> be themselves, yeah. you know, and be themselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think as parents, we also want to be careful, mm. right? Be mindful that, you know, uh, if we have a very strong personality and you know uh, then, then we, we want to be mindful and uh, to also to take note and observe our children's uh, personality and traits that are evident in their little little uh, de in their daily lives yeah and not do you know impose and you know lock stock barrel dumb our <laughs> our way on them <laughs> Yeah, but I guess that, that comes with uh what we call a higher mastery of our own personality type, right? Especially when we have gained mm. awareness of ourselves. Uh, even I mean, even after when we knew the anagram, I think a lot of the things that the insights that we got were only when we, uh, in how to say reflect about our own behaviors, how we did, why we did certain things. Then we kind of realize, mm. oh, you know, I've been behaving like that. Uh, therefore, yeah, yeah we we try not, not to. Uh, impose our 
characteristics or traits to other people. But uh, it's not always easy because we've been doing this for the, you know, forever. But I guess it starts somewhere yes. with, you know, the awareness. And then now we start to grow a little bit more to um, higher mm. mastery line in that sense. <laughs> yeah. So, mm-hmm. Anita, where do you think is your growth path then for your parenting style? I think you're already awesome, but where, how else do you think you can, you know, grow to help support your children better on, in your parenting style, per se? Uh, I think the growth path for me now, uh, would be putting back the anagram, is to grow the other types of, uh, other types of uh, personality. I think I need to taper down the two uh, to help my girls. Because it is, I think, too overpowering, overbearing uh, for them already. Because they are 21 and 19. I mean, legally, they can do a lot of things. And I think legally, they can go zoop too, right? I'm not sure. So, so uh, tone down the two, I think. Um, and then, you know, build the eight. For me, I think I need to build the eight. And also, um, to be very, um, build the eight. Is, is the positive side of it where I can, as I said, you know, if I want to help, I help. If I don't want to help, sorry. You know, and it's not personal. They have to, they they have to, to say no. And it's not also, personal. Like... I think one of my growth is that it's not personal. Nothing is personal when your children at an older age reject you, you know. And also, I think um, to start loving myself, you understand? To start uh, falling in mm. love with myself. Uh, because being a type 2, we're very self-forgetting. This is always others before self. Mm-hmm. So to actually say hi, girls, you know, like like today, they didn't say thank you, right? You can see I'm a bit sore about it. Huh? No, no. <laughs> and I did tell them, I said, okay, uh, if you don't want my help, because I haven't had lunch, I had a very late, I had a brunch. So I'm going to go Makisan later. Okay, advertising for Makisan. Okay, I'm going to go Makisan later at Bishan. I'm going to eat something. So if you want, you give me a call, I'll pick you up. If not, I'm at Bishan. Bye. And it's not, it didn't feel hurt. I didn't feel hurt. You know? So I'm activating mm. other part, you know, to, to make sure that, you know, I need to taper down the tool. Like. I think the tool is, can be particularly for me, self-sabotaging because, you know, too much of it is no good. So Anita, sounds like, you know, you've done some quite a lot of reflection on what is your growth path. And I think I agree, you know, all of us, we need to grow um, and uh it's, it's not always easy. La. I think at, at a certain age, right, <laughs> you know, tapering down on what we have been doing for the re- for forever uh, is, is always not the easiest. But I think for us, if, if we, when, when we have gained that awareness, the first step, the next step is really to take actions. And I really applaud you that, you know, you are doing that even at your kids are, are so grown up already and you're still trying to, you know, grow your, your yourself in, in terms of your parenting style. So, Yep. Um, so Lillian, I think today, I think that's about the time that we have. Uh, so we want to thank Anita for coming to share with us your very <laughs> wonderful stories about your children. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a very lively session today. <laughs> yeah, we really enjoy having <laughs> you on board with us. So thank you so much for coming on board today. Uh, and so welcome uh, the rest of us. If you are keen to know more about the Enneagram parenting style or even just about Enneagram, uh, welcome to... Join us at the Knowing Me, Knowing You workshop that's uh, available at the Class Living website. So it's uh, in the banner below. So feel free to come and join us uh, for the next workshop upcoming. And uh, we'll see you around for the next uh, personality type with a uh, parenting style with Enneagram for the next uh, personality type. So that's it for yes. me. Uh, Lillian, do you have anything else to add on? Um, no, I just enjoy the type 2 present. They are always so, as usual, so charming and you know fun-loving as well. And yeah, we look forward to learn from the other personality type parents. And we see you at the next episode. Bye. Right. Thank Bye. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.